Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books, and I have been covering Disney very closely these last few months, and now we have figured out that Nelson Peltz has gotten his way. Nelson Peltz wins. He's been able to defeat Bob Iger. Nelson Peltz today declared victory. He did it on CNBC in a live interview. I'm going to play that for you. I want you to hear it in his own voice. And here in the article from Barron's, Disney plans to reinstate its dividend and cut 7,000 jobs. Nelson Peltz declares victory. This is what Nelson Peltz said he wanted. Massive layoffs, massive restructuring and how the business was organized and how it was focused, as well as a return to paying dividends to shareholders. Just that idea of paying dividends, that's like money that you get just because you own the stock. It's shared profit that gets paid out every now and then. And it's starting off at a small number, but it's gonna start by the end of this calendar year. This is nothing Bob Iger talked about doing when he came back to Disney. All of it now is since Nelson Peltz went after him, and also since Dan Loeb went after Bob Chapek, which is really interesting because this all comes together of course, there's a lot of behind the scenes things going on. We found out about Ike Perlmutter, the current chairman of Marvel, going after Bob Iger by supporting Nelson Peltz in the proxy battle. This is not something that Bob Iger could have continued to fight in public. He would have been constantly undermined. And now that Bob Iger has essentially submitted to the plan that Nelson Peltz and Dan Loeb wanted for Disney, he's going to be rearranging the company. And what's also interesting about this is that McKinsey plan, the plan for all the massive layoffs and restructuring that got whipped up between somehow like August and October of 2022, that was around the time that Dan Loeb and Nelson Peltz were doing things behind the scenes. McKinsey plan didn't happen all by itself. That must have happened either from Dan Loeb or some coordination with Nelson Peltz. And now it's getting done. The layoffs are here. The restructuring is here. The one thing I haven't heard anything about is any kind of reviving the franchises and reviving the brands. I've heard that they're gonna do these sequels, they're gonna do a Frozen sequel, they're gonna do a Zootopia sequel, they're gonna do a Toy Story sequel, and of course they should be doing sequels to their brands that were very, very successful, but of course they should also be focused on story rather than the Disney key of inclusion that they introduced in 2020. Nothing about that yet. Will that come up in the future? We'll have to wait and see. What I'd like to do is play this for you so you can hear Nelson Peltz in his own words talk about his success over essentially Bob Iger. He's winning gracefully, but he did get what he wanted. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications and give me a thumbs up. I'm bringing in to find out in an instant reaction to what David just got with Bob. Nelson, is this one of those hey, where you Jim. just declare victory? How are you doing? Okay, Jim, how are you? Well, my Chapel you... Trust owns Disney. I like what I heard. I really like you what love... I heard, Nelson. These are exciting times. You know, Jim, my dad once told me that you can only win once. This was a great win for all the shareholders. Management at Disney now plans to do everything that we wanted them to do. We wish the very best to Bob, his management team, the board. We will be watching. We will be rooting. And the proxy fight is over. Yes. Thank you for declaring victory in a gracious way. Uh, this was a huge win for you. I bet you, I know you don't typically talk about it, but I'm going to ask you, how much money did you make? Well, who, who's counting? <laughs> All right. Well, I just know you. The viewers. The viewers want to count. But I, well, everybody made money. To... Jimmy, everybody made money. Uh, that's the best way to put it. And I know that you got previously before this, you were friends. I think there's no reason to think you can't be again. That's just my view of things. I, I agree. I, I'll pick up lunch or breakfast the next time. I promise. <laughs> well, good. Carl, what do you think? It sounds like there's some graciousness is, is here. It, is it the shortest fight you've ever seen? <laughs> well, how about it's the uh, W is a W. Nelson, uh, great job. And I know that uh, I wish you well. And obviously, Bob Iger, maybe you call him tomorrow. We'll wish him happy birthday. I, I'm definitely going to do it. I didn't realize it until I watched just now that it's his birthday. I might even send him a gift. Well, there you go. Anyway, look, thanks for calling in. The proxy fight is over, and uh, Bob Iger delivered for everybody, including Nelson Peltz. Thank you, Nelson, for calling in.
Okay, so Peltz has made at least a few hundred million dollars, if not more, depending on if he bought stock, options, God knows what he was doing. However, the stock is up, the changes are happening at Disney, the dividend is returning, which means there will be regular payments of cash to Disney shareholders, which always makes the stock price go up a little bit in anticipation of that money coming in on a regular basis. Nelson Peltz has gotten his way. Bob Iger kind of realized, look, who am I gonna be doing this? What am I gonna fight with Nelson Peltz, Dan Loeb, other investors at the same time as trying to protect all the inclusion stuff that they've put into all the content. There's really no way to win. May as well just lay everybody off, make the best deal he can possibly make, which he definitely did. And this also involves the restructuring of Disney in a tremendous way. And now they can sell ESPN when the time is right. Additionally, you have Bob Iger taking interviews talking about how he's open to selling Hulu. He wants to see if he's going to buy it. He may take an offer for it. He doesn't know. And he should be obfuscating what their intentions are for Hulu at this point. I would still think they intend to keep Hulu and want to own Hulu because they use it as part of their bundling strategy. Anybody who knows Disney well knows that Disney has leveraged bundling for their cable channels, meaning ESPN, for example, is in high demand. So if you sell ESPN, you can sell a whole bunch of other mediocre cable channels along with it and get higher prices for all of it. But you still have to have that major loss leader, ESPN, to drive the interest from the cable companies to want to carry all the other titles. Because you can really force them to take the other stuff. Disney right now is marketing Disney+. Plus at a combination with Hulu for like $9.99. It's very affordable and Hulu adds a lot of value all on its own. So you kind of have to look at it and say, look, he's not gonna openly say, listen, sure, we'd be happy to take a check or we really wanna keep this if Comcast doesn't wanna buy it. Another big consideration is the part of the reason why they bought Fox for $71 billion, although they sold two units for almost $25 billion. So it really wasn't a full $71 billion, but part of buying Fox was keeping it away from Comcast they do have to deal with Comcast as a major competitor. It's unlikely they'd want to sell Hulu to Comcast, but who knows, anything could happen. As Bob Iger says, everything is on the table, and he has to say that because he kind of has new bosses. It's not just the board. It's Nelson Peltz and it's Dan Loeb, particularly Nelson Peltz and Ike Perlmutter, who can undermine Iger at any point in the public if they choose to do it. And he knows that they've held off their main wild card, which is to start to talk about how Disney really has ruined its franchises through all their excessive focus on inclusion over story. They just did it with the new Toy Story movie, Lightyear. They just keep doing it time and time again. And there's a good chance if they did get attacked for it, they would have to back down. Peltz is also happy with this kind of arrangement because look, he doesn't need to be on the board to affect change. He just proved that. Beyond that, Peltz has done this sort of thing numerous times before in 30 or more other public companies. He knows how to get results, and he also knows he can always go after them again if for some reason Disney backs off and doesn't do what it's supposed to do, which is follow his instructions almost to the letter with all of their restructuring. I wish Nelson Peltz, though, let me know what you think in the comments below, would start openly talking about how they've damaged their franchises and how they need to make them really good again. And here's an interesting article that came about because Bob Iger did an interview this morning with CNBC talking about a bit of news I wasn't familiar with. Bob Iger says he prevented Marvel chairman Isaac Perlmutter from firing Kevin Feige in 2015. Disney CEO Bob Iger on Thursday called Marvel chairman Isaac Perlmutter's backing of activist investor Nelson Peltz a curious dynamic. Peltz of Tryon Group this morning abandoned his battle with Disney that featured a push for a seat on the board. He said a wide-ranging corporate restructuring announced Wednesday spoke to many of his concerns about the company's management and strategy. Peltz's campaign didn't go public until mid last year, but it started back in 2022 under former CEO Bob Chapek with Perlmutter's support, Disney said. In an SEC filing in January as part of its proxy fight with Peltz, Disney lists meetings and calls starting in the summer of 2022 involving Peltz and Chapek, CFO Christine McCarthy, and Amy Chang and Safra Katz, General Counsel Horatio Gutierrez, as well as Iger. A number of them were initiated by Perlmutter, who supported Peltz and lobbied Disney execs and board members on his behalf. Peltz or Isaac Perlmutter, an employee and shareholder of Disney who currently serves as chairman of Marvel Entertainment, and he owns 1% of Disney, which is like over $2.4 billion worth of Disney stock, on Peltz's behalf, 
asked for a board seat or suggest that he should be added to the board no less than 20 times since July 2022, said Disney in the filing. In an interview with CNBC, Iger indicated that Perlmutter wasn't happy at losing oversight of Marvel's movie-making operation. Our filings indicate that both Ike and Nelson were working together to try to encourage the board or convince the board to put Nelson on the board. They have a relationship that dates back quite some time. We bought Marvel in 2009. I promised Ike the job that he would continue to run Marvel after that. Not forever necessarily, but after that. And in 2015, he was intent on firing Kevin Feige, who was running Marvel Studio, the movie-making operation at the time, and I thought that was a mistake and stepped in to prevent that from happening. I think Kevin is an incredibly, incredibly talented executive that, you know, the Marvel track record speaks for itself. And so I moved the movie-making operation of Marvel out from under Ike into the movie studio under Alan Horn. Now, why would Ike be upset with that? It's not like he did sold the company to Disney and was told that he would still be able to control Marvel and control the properties. And obviously the idea of controlling the properties is to continue to make sure that they're good and that they make money. Since then, they've obviously been co-opted for an inclusion agenda. Feige was then reporting directly to Horn, who retired from the company in 2021. Asked by host David Faber if that created ill will, the move where Ike Perlmutter was taken away from Marvel's control, Iger said, you'd have to ask Ike about that. But let's put it this way, he was not happy about it. And I think that unhappiness exists today. And you know what the link is between that and Nelson, that relationship, I think that's something you can speculate about, I won't. So that's Bob Iger saying, hey, I'm not sure if Ike Perlmutter is unhappy with my management of Marvel and my destruction of all the characters. However, you know, you'd have to ask him about it. I don't know. Well, it looks like Bob Iger basically is stuck doing what Peltz wanted him to do. And if Peltz decides to go after the inclusion agenda, which I certainly hope he does in 2023, we'll have to keep an eye out. That will increase the value of Disney tremendously. However, I would say this. I don't like giving stock advice. I'm just going to say you better be really careful if you invest in Disney. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if Iger is going to be able to execute on all these changes or not. Who knows what's going to happen? I would stay the heck away from this company. There's something deeply wrong with Disney. Let me know in the comments what you think of all this below. Did you think Peltz was going to win this way? Did you think that he would have to still do the proxy fight. It looks like Iger just doesn't have the energy to fight with Peltz. And frankly, I can't even blame him because Peltz is a nonstop wrecking ball, it seems like. Let me know what you think, though, of that in the comments below. Always love to see your comments. Please be sure you're subscribed to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.